Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner of Future Technology Podcasts with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies poised to transform our lives for better or worse are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used. We're just around the corner from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Future Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Juliette Lamar. We have with us today on the line, Wim Sweden. He is the co-founder at Kiswi Mobile. Welcome, Wim. Thank you, Juliette. It's good to be, uh, to be here with you. Yes, thank you for joining us. Why don't you go ahead and give us a little overview about what Kiswi is and what you do there. Good. So I'm one of the co-founders of Kiswi Mobile. We're a company about four years old. And we are specialized in mobile interactive video, meaning we bring video and televised streaming content to mobile com- to mobile devices in a way that is completely personalized, social, and interactive. Wow. So when you say interactive, give us a little overview about, about how we can interact. Yeah, sure. And, and to tell you a little bit about sort of the background of the company, when we started the company, we wanted to really bring streaming and TV content to mobile. And what we realized very early on in the company, that if you just bring standard linear TV content or streaming content to mobile, it doesn't work very well. The engagement actually often goes down compared to a big screen or compared to to a, a, a laptop or a computer experience. And what we quickly realized is that um, the attention span of a user on a mobile is about eight seconds. And every app you have on your mobile is an interactive app, touching your screen all the time, no matter which app you do. However, when you just watch TV content or streaming content, it's typically designed as a lean-back experience. It's designed for Mm -hmm. a big screen. It's designed for a non-touch screen. So what we um, are focused on as a company is making that content interactive, meaning you can touch the screen, you can customize the content, you can interact with the content, you can play games. And, and sort of be part of the media experience. Fantastic. So how did you find yourself in, in this world as a, and then as a co-founder for the company? How did you come to this yeah, it's, conclusion? Yeah, it's a fascinating story. So um, uh, we founded the company about four years ago, and several of us sort of came from the actual telecom industry. We used to be people yeah. working on building some of the biggest you know, mobile networks uh, out there today, 4G and 5G networks. And what we realized as we sort of built those networks, that those networks were not only becoming data networks, but they were really becoming video networks. And we figured that, look, video and live video on mobiles is going to be a big thing. And that was sort of the impetus in some sense for leaving the telecom industry where we built network and joining more the media and entertainment industry where we're now in the process of filling the networks that, that we, 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 we used to build. And do you have any statistics or an idea of how many people use video on their phone as opposed to any other medium? Well, there's, there is, there's a lot of statistics out there that really indicate that the, the mobile screen, which often in the TV industry is referred to as the second screen. And if you sort of talk to people in the TV industry, they say, oh, yeah, it's the second screen. It's the small screen. And, uh, and what we have realized is that for many users, particularly younger users, particularly digital generation or millennial people, the mobile is actually not the second screen. It's actually not uh, even the first screen. It's often the only screen. And, and I notice this because my, my children are that generation. You know, they're like Gen Z, millennial generation. And what I noticed, and actually it relates a little bit to when we started the company, is that they pretty much use their mobile as their only screen. They consume all their content, long form, short form, social content on their device. And you, you'll find lots of statistics sort of confirming that. And there was sort of that realization combined with the fact that people started cutting the court and that sort of the traditional way of consuming TV through linear um, uh, subscriptions is changing that sort of led us to start a company. I, I totally agree with you. I think uh, being from the millennial generation, we don't have a TV in our house at all. If we want to watch something, I watch it on my tablet or my laptop, um, on my phone if I'm cooking. <laughs> and yeah. a lot of my friends, none of us have TVs. So it's really funny when there's a big sporting event or you know the Academy Awards, 
we always are scrambling to say, who's, who's got a TV? Because <laughs> no one has one. Yes, and it, it's fun. In some sense, it's, there's a funny story to that because just around the time, it was right before we started the company, in my own house, our, we used to have a set-top box and a cable TV subscription. One day, the set-top box crashed. You know, it just sort of didn't work. or it didn't, And I probably would only have had to reboot it and it would have been fine. But I forgot. I literally forgot to do it. And after a couple of weeks, nobody was really bothered. The, the kids didn't care. They worked, They had ways of getting all the content that they needed on their mobile device. And that was sort of like a little aha moment for me personally when I realized, like, wait a minute. A lot more people are going to see this uh, happening. A lot more people are going to shift to mobile watching. But then mm-hmm. it also, as we started the company and built the technology, made us realize that if you just take content made for a lean back experience or content made for a big screen and bring it to mobile, which lots of people do out there, it doesn't drive the same level of engagement, mostly because the mobile screen is such a fundamental interactive touchscreen, personalized screen, but the experience of lean back linear TV is not. And so what we mm-hmm. realized is we had to adapt the experience to the device. You, we wanted to build the best possible experience and content and technology for using on a mobile device. That's why as a company, we don't build much for laptops or for desktops or for big screens we are uniquely focused on the mobile as the first screen absolutely and and some of the ways that that you create this immersive engagement are rewards and you have some different social like play features can you go into a couple of the actual yeah, features so I, can, that... I can talk a little bit about so let's let's get more specific in terms of what does it really mean to be interactive and to touch the screen during a live event so i'll give a mm-hmm. couple of examples we have done quite a bit of work uh, working with sports teams and sport leagues sort of pretty much around the world. I mean, uh, and one of the very first projects we did in the company in like the first six months was a project with the WNBA. And we wanted to bring a more personalized way of watching a basketball game. And one thing that we built, and we were one of the first companies to do this, is the ability to watch a basketball game like you would do on TV, but you could actually choose yourself which camera angle you wanted to watch. Meaning that as oh, wow. opposed to a driver in a truck, choosing that for everybody, everybody could pick their own one. I want to pick the close-up, I want to pick the, 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 the left view, the right view, depending on how you want to experience the game, you can watch it the way you want to watch it. And that's sort of one of the first examples, I can go to many more, of how we sort of personalized um, uh, content. That's fantastic. Yeah, g- give us some more examples just so we can have a, a good overview. So there's a couple more things that we did along those lines. I mean, we worked with other sports. We did some cycling uh, examples, which is my personal favorite sports. We did some track and field. We did some soccer experiences. We worked a project around the, 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 the American Cup and soccer a couple of years ago. And it was generally the idea that you would provide information like, you know, choose your camera angle. You would provide statistics about the game as to who has which points and who is on the, on the three-point leaderboard. Typically, things that in a linear TV, a director would put as an infographic every few minutes, we would again let the user decide, hey, let me sort of pull up who is leading this particular uh, stat, or let me figure out what's going on on Twitter related to this game, or let me look at the game from this particular camera angle so I can see whether this was an offside situation or not, and maybe I can create my own personal clip around it and share it on Twitter. So this way I become sort of part of the game. I can comment on it, I can curate it, I can clip it, and I can share it with my friends. And that's sort of another example of how we added interactivity and personalization. That is so fun because you're, you are creating something new. Each person is going to have their own unique experience. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it, is, it, is, it is a lot of fun to work in this company because we sort of get to experience and pioneer a lot of these things. And, and actually, you asked about uh, statistics earlier. I'll give you sort of some numbers that we sort of measured along the way. For example, for some of the sports events we did in Europe, uh, we did sort of an apples to apples comparison about people who would just watch a traditional linear broadcast on their mobile versus people who would take sort of our personalization features and our camera angles and our statistics in it. And that we, what we found is that people who had the interactive experience would typically stay on the app or stay in the, in, in the event four times. So like a, a 400% increase 
in user engagement by letting people sort of participate and customize and personalize the experience. And that's sort of a good example that, that confirmed that we were on the right direction. And I, I can imagine that a lot of, of companies and or shows would be very interested in being on your platform because it is keeping viewers there longer, which I think is one of the major problems right now with uh, live TV is keeping people on the same channel or watching the same program because there's so many options. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, I, I think particularly as content moves to mobile, making sure to keep people engaged and, and, and driving engagement time is actually one of the major challenges in the industry. And so the fact that we have some of these numbers to, to back this up has generated quite a bit of interest and, and allows us to work with, with quite a few people because this is a challenge. Now, there's another thing we figured out in this same project that we already had 400% improvement by adding personalization. But then we had another feature where we added a small game to the event. So, for example, this was a track and field event. And right before, say, the 100 meters would start, a little thing would pop up on your screen. It's like, hey, who do you think is going to win? And uh, <laughs> people could vote as to who is going to win. And if you turn out to be right, then you got a point and so on. So it's a small game we added. And then when later on, when we ran the, the, the analysis, we realized that people who actually participated in the game had a factor nine, so like 900% uh, increased engagement. And that was another sort of big aha moment for us as a company that, that when you, interactivity brings engagement, but when you add a layer of gaming or some friendly competition on it, engagement shot up even more. And that was actually the segue for us to sort of launch our first direct-to-consumer effort, while many of the other ones were more in a, in a business-to-business fashion. And our direct-to-consumer effort was particularly focused on exploring this sort of gaming thing. And I, I see here that you have interactive monetization. Can you explain that slightly? Uh, you, uh, interactive monetization. So, yeah, here's the idea on interactive monetization. It's a little bit part of the philosophy of the company. So our view is really that there's a new medium being created on mobile, around video, around live video and personalization. And our goal has always been, let's make sure that we take the content, we take the, the basketball game or the soccer game or, or whatever sport, and we make it personalized. We make it interactive through gaming, through statistics and so on. And then the next step, and we've started to explore that step as well, let's take typical like monetization uh, aspects of, of, uh, of, of TV, like sponsorships or advertising, and then we can make those personalized and interactive as well. We can make sure that the right person gets the right type of information or the right sponsor or the right message or the right level of interactivity, like we've added some, some e-commerce capabilities on it where you can immediately go to a point of sale or consume content or buy content. And in my mind, it's a step two. First, you make the, the content personalized and interactive, and then you look at, pers- at monetization around um, you know, sponsorship, ads, uh, user engagement, and you make that personalized and interactive as well. That's, that's, that's fantastic. It's, you know, it's a whole new way of consuming media that I think is the future. So in the next three years, do you have things that you're trying to roll out and, and goals that you've set? Yeah, so there's there's a couple things we're doing. I mean, uh, we we very much feel the same way that this is the wave of the future. It's a new way of creating content, inter- interacting with users. One big project that um, we started uh, earlier this year is our first direct-to-consumer project, where we've actually taken our learnings from working with broadcasters and lurking, working with some of the biggest sport leagues out there, and we launched an app. It's called Hang Time. And it's actually focused particularly on that gaming aspect because we realized if you combine video watching with gaming, engagement went up a factor nine. So like we're like, aha, let's launch a, a direct-to-consumer app on that. And that's just what, we, what we're starting to do now. And then the other thing we realize around that is that there is a game aspect. It is sort of like an appointment. It's live. It's only at certain times of the day. And people can play quiz games or trivia games and others. And the other thing that we realized is that The more you do it with your friends and the more you do it as a social experience, just like you mentioned earlier, you know, you get your your, 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 your your group texting with your friends like, hey, who's watching this event? What's going on? We have built that sort of social aspect of watching TV, typically when you're not physically together, into the same app. So you can watch together with your friends. 
you can play together with your friends, you can have fun with your friends, you can sort of chat with your friends, you have private chat rooms, private hangs, we call them. And that is sort of a, a big direction that we see when you sort of bring personalization, interact interactivity, and social to the same platform, you sort of have uh, the, the ideal formula. Well, that's so fantastic. So I guess what's the easiest way for people to start getting involved and, and use Kiswi? Um, there's a number of things you can do. The easiest thing to do is if you want to get an experience of an interactive uh, um, a video is to simply download our Hangtime app. I mean, you can download the app. We have games every day. We're sort of more of a game network. So there's different types of games, the different type of the day, different flavors. We have animated characters that people love to engage with. And as you play, you will quickly feel you get drawn into this to this uh, uh, atmosphere and into the culture around it. And you get to engage uh, with the characters or some of the animated characters that we have. And you can sort of witness our technology. If you want to take a next step and really work with us directly, I mean, we do a lot of work with TV companies, with broadcasters, with sport leagues around the world where we sort of cloud enable a lot of capabilities. We have built uh, remote commentator capabilities. We've built video calling capabilities. There's lots of ways you can sort of work with us, but the easiest way to experience it is to download Hangtime. That's fantastic. And you're mostly sports and games. Are there other things that you that you also cover, say uh, award shows and, and those type of events? Yes, there's, there's actually, we have do also done quite a bit in music. I mean, uh, hmm. particularly around like live music events. We have a couple partnerships with events here in, 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 in New York City where we take video events. And again, you know, there's a band performing and people want to interact with, with each other, watch it with their friends, maybe watch the band from a different angle. Uh, we also launched uh, with one of our partners in Korea, because we have an office in, in Asia as well. We, we launched a app called Cube TV, where we focused on K-pop. We do a lot of K-pop efforts with different bands, with different cameras, with different angles. So a lot of the capabilities that we've built are really inspired by sports and now by games also translate to, to music really well. That is fantastic. Very exciting. I am definitely going to go download this and start trying to use it. So That means you and I can actually app. play together a game. We could be just in a private yes. hang with two of us and play together and help each other because I got to admit something. I'm typically not very good at the trivia games that we organize that I usually never win. <laughs> well, then I'll have to play against you and then I'll win. <laughs> well, uh, for sure. Or you'll have to help me. Yes, you could be on the same team. Uh, actually, often we have sort of a team versus team. We call it hang battles, where people join in groups of five or six. And if you have a well-rounded group with people who know music or history or trivia or TV, then you typically will win because you will help each other. And that's sort of, again, the principle of bringing social to life events. And I love how it's taking this very uh, personal experience. You know, if you're sitting down watching a video, you're not talking to anybody, you're not, you know, engaging with anything, but now it's become so immersive. And that is just a really, really interesting and cool way to consume this media. Yeah, there, there's no doubt about it, because in some sense, what 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 we have done as an industry and is that we have made consuming content so easy, meaning you can consume content anywhere, anytime, on any device. Great, and we all do it. But almost as a side effect, that means that consuming content has become almost antisocial. I consume my content on my device whenever and wherever I want it. And there's now sort of a reverse trend that, that we're a part of where it's like, hey, you know, it's about sort of watching it together. It's about doing it together. It's about connecting with my friends around content, just like you would have friends over to watch a game at your house. We're now creating sort of a virtual digital equivalent of that. Absolutely. Well, I'm so excited. So the best place, like you said, is download the app on your Google or Apple Play. And correct. the website is kisswe.com, K-I-S-W-E.com, yes. correct? Yes, that, that's our that's our corporate website. If you want to know more about the app, there's another website called letshangtime.com, or you can just search for Hangtime in the Play or Apple Store, and you'll find the app, and you can download it. Oh, fantastic. Wim, thank you so much for joining us here today and sharing this exciting new way to consume media. 
And uh, well, it's really good talking to you. I think you 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 understand a lot about what we're doing, and I think your your comments are, are really taken at heart about how this technology sort of enables an entire new medium where the users become part of the content, and the content producers and the artists have an entire new medium available for them to create their art and engage with their with their users and their fans. Fantastic. That was Wim Swilden. He is the co-founder at Kiswe Mobile. Kiswe Mobile is K-I-S-W-E dot com. Also, you can find it in your app store on your phone. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to Future Tech Podcast. This has been Juliet Lamar. Catch you next time. You have been listening to Almost Here, Around the Corner Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, both to review, to discover more future technologies, that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more.